What is up Karatics? So as most of you may know, with the introduction of the San Andreas Mercenaries DLC update, Rockstar removed almost 200 cars from the in-game websites. They claimed that these were lesser used vehicles and the reason they did this was to supposedly streamline the browsing experience when that was obviously just an excuse Rockstar came up with. They obviously did this to make all those cars FOMO content, which is fear of missing out, so that you're more likely to come back every event week to maybe get one of those cars from the dealerships, and maybe even purchase a GTA Plus subscription so that you can access the GTA Plus only Vywood Car Club. I think most of the community agrees that none of these vehicles, except for maybe the stealable slash storable street cars, should have been removed. So I've decided to make a video compiling a list of the top 10 cars that I and a lot of my friends personally think should not have been removed. So starting off with number 10, we have the Faggio Mod and the Faggio Sport. So this was the ultimate meme vehicle of the game, I mean it still is for those of you who still own it, especially these newer variants of the original Faggio with the actual good customization. Now, Rockstar removing the original Faggio is understandable, but these newer variants being removed just don't make sense to me. I think most of us can agree on that. The newer variants should have stayed. Continuing to number 9, we have the Overflawed Entity XF. Now, yes, I know we have the Entity XXR and the Entity MT, which are the newer variants of the Entity, but the Entity was the OG best supercar for racing on most tracks back in 2013, Plus, it's the only entity in game that doesn't have those annoying slow handling flags. I just think with how iconic the entity was in 2013, it's something that should have not been removed. They didn't remove the adder, but they decided to remove this one. Again, just, I don't understand. Anyways, moving on to number 8, we have the Vapid FMJ. So this car is obviously the newer variant of the bullet, and I sort of expected Rockstar removing the bullet, even though that's a legendary car as well, but anyways, the FMJ though, I, I just don't understand the point in them removing that one. It, it's got great customization, it's one of the best looking cars in the game in my opinion, and it's decently quick, just another questionable decision by Rockstar. Next up, on to number 7, we have the Buffalo S, the Bodhi, and the Tailgater. So these are literally the three protagonist cars from story mode, that's why I'm putting it as one instead of three separate ones, but this one just really baffles me. Rockstar is quite clearly showing that they obviously don't care about story mode, which we already knew, but just a real shame. And I know we have a newer variant of the Buffalo and the Tailgater, but I really feel that these OGs should have been given an exception to that considering how they're associated with Michael, Franklin, and Trevor. Continuing to number 6, we have the Ocelot XA21. Now this one is a bit biased because that's my personal favorite car in the game, but it truly is a well-rounded car. It has gorgeous styling in my opinion, an incredible exhaust note, a nicely detailed engine bay, great customization, the active aero spoiler, very smooth handling. It's just really the overall package and I think it's a real shame that such a great supercar was removed from the website. However, at the time of this recording, during this current event week, you can actually acquire it from the test ride in the LS Carmate, so definitely pick one up if you don't own it already. I guarantee you guys will love this car. Moving on to number 5, we have the Pegasi Torero. Now, this car is obviously based on the legendary Lamborghini Countach, arguably the most iconic Lamborghini ever made, and the fact that Rockstar removed this one makes absolutely no sense to me at all. This was literally a childhood dream car for some people, and Rockstar removing it is just a real kick in the groin to the car community. Next up, on to number 4, we have the Progen GP1, another car that's based on a legendary vehicle, the McLaren F1. And Rockstar actually did an incredible job with this car, giving it an exclusive interior very close to its real life counterpart, very detailed engine model, amazing customization, and just a really great overall design. This one probably annoys me the most out of this entire list because most car guys can agree the McLaren F1 is pretty much the holy grail of iconic supercars. Continuing to number 3, we have the SE Sport. Now for those of you who don't know, for rally style off-road sports car races, this is arguably still the best car for those types of tracks. 
Plus has arguably the best handling car in the entire sports class, and Rockstar removing something from the website that actually had a purpose in the racing community, that one's just really, really annoying. Moving on to number two, we have the regular Comet, which Rockstar removed from both Legendary Motorsport and the Benny's website. So unless you already have an OG Comet, you can no longer just buy it right away and bring it to Benny's for that Comet Retro Custom upgrade, and you can't steal it off the street either because it's considered a hot car. I mean, really Rockstar, how are you going to essentially remove a Benny's car from the website? That one, that's just very annoying. Benny should not have been touched. And lastly, on to number one, we have the Sterling GT. So this car literally just received updated visual customization, liveries, and even the HSW upgrade in last year's summer DLC, and then Rockstar decided to remove it from the website only a year later. Really Rockstar? That's, <laughs> that's pretty ridiculous, especially when you consider this car literally is the fastest car with HSW upgrade alongside the HSW Turismo Classic on current gen for Sports Classics Racing. I just don't understand this one, and even if you're on old gen, it's still ridiculous considering they literally just updated the customization for it a year ago. It has amazing handling, a fantastic exhaust note, and of course it's based on the legendary Mercedes 300 SL with those iconic going doors. Just a real shame. So there is my list for the top 10 cars that shouldn't have been removed. Obviously there is a ton of other amazing cars that were removed as well. But these were just my personal top 10 that stood out to me the most. Now it is possible that Rockstar could revert this change in a future DLC, probably like a 2% chance, but <laughs> I honestly highly doubt it. They're, they're not, they're not going to do it. It's going to stay the way it is. Even with all the negative community feedback, I still think they're going to leave it as is. Maybe even remove more cars in the next DLC. Uh, it's I, We don't know at this point. Just a real shame. But at least there's still ways to acquire some of these cars via test ride, uh, auto shop, MC club, all that different stuff. I did make a video um, covering all those methods, which I'll leave linked down below in the pinned comment. But um, it's just a shame that we can't acquire them normally anymore. Just kind of annoying, a bit of a nuisance to have to jump all these different hoops and to try to get these older DLC cars. But anyways, guys, definitely let me know down below in the comments what top 10 vehicles you think Rockstar should not have removed from the websites. Um, personally, I think I covered most of the major ones in terms of cars that are useful performance-wise and also cars that are iconic in real life. Um, but of course, definitely let me know what your top 10 list will be down below in the comments. Again, as always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.